Welcome back to another episode of TVGP's We Rogue Like It. I'm your host, Boston. And joining me as always is Moonpeer. Hi. Here for week three of Balatro. Balatro. The only game I'm playing right now. <laughs> oh, oh, Boston, help me. Help uh -huh. me. I it is, it is not clicking with me in the slightest. Oh, no. <laughs> um, okay, I'm here to help. I'm here to... To assist, to to help in the way of cards. What's uh? What do you don't know? It, it it's. I don't know if it's the fact that the game keeps kicking me in the teeth. I don't know if it's the fact that I can't seem to put a winning run together to save my life. I went mm. to anti like seven and died very yeah. badly. Also, the needle uh, boss can just go straight to hell, like Which go straight one to jail. One? Play one hand. That's one of my, that's one of my least favorite ones because you look at it and you're like, oh well, you know, like the big blind is eight thousand chips, and the needle is like three thousand. I should be able to do that. And you play a hand, and it's like, yeah, twenty eight hundred points. It's like I swear to God. <laughs> and I never run into that boss when I have some sort of ability to reroll the boss's blind. Like I just, I, mm -hmm. I never get that combination. Yep, I yeah. hate the. I hate I hate I I hate so much about this game. Not in a really poor way. Mm -hmm. Just a roguelike. Um, way. just in a roguelike way where it, for yeah. whatever reason it is just not clicking with me in the slightest. Like, I don't know if it's the fact that it's a card game. I don't know mm -hmm. if it's the fact that I'm not great at this particular game. Mm -hmm. I found it really hard to get over the hump of getting that first win. Um, that's I, the thing. Yeah. I, I feel like that's the thing that took me the longest. And I think part of that had to do with unlocking more jokers um, just by going uh -huh. through and like trying to unlock as many, as many jokers as you can um, yeah. without needing a win. Um, that helped quite a bit. Um, but I, I think for me, Part of it was just sort of like starting to learn the jokers and kind of learning the synergies and also kind of learning when I felt like a run wasn't going to get there. Um, yeah. And that, that last part, especially for me, I had a bunch of runs that completely fell on their face this morning. I, I played a bunch this morning. Um, and a lot of them were just like, Cool, I'm on anti three and I just have nothing. Like I I don't have any jokers that are synergizing. I you know, a bunch of runs that are made it past anti one by the skinnier teeth. And it's sort of like, yeah. oh cool. I didn't get any jokers, you know, of of any note here in my first couple of shops. This run's not going anywhere, man. I'm just I'm just gonna start so, back over. So I just wanna double check that I'm getting my order of operations correct here. Okay. Um, for the jokers. Yeah. Chips plus malt times malt, correct? Chips plus malt times malt. Uh oh, like what you want. Oh, it from going from left to right? Yes. That's and how I, I typically that me do doing it. the hand signals on the screen doesn't right. help because yours is reversed. Right. Well, I to me, I don't really I don't often care where my chip or malt my chip or additional malt jokers go uh, as long as they kind of don't play off of one another but the times uh -huh. malt always go at the end because uh, you you want yeah. all of the bonuses of uh the other ones on the left to to get multiplied as late as possible um yeah i mean i don't know i don't know if it's just the fact that i'm not fine like i had a really good like really good set of jokers mm -hmm. where it'll give me like plus 50 chips per um per face card nice and i had a second joker that played every card as a face card great loving it and then i had like one which, which was like plus like three dollars and like plus two molds for every face card played all right, I like it. this is so a good I synergy. Like, I like it. This is an unbeatable run. Like, yep. I, how am I ever going to lose on this run? I just didn't have the malt by the time I got up to like anti six. I just didn't have the yeah. 
total malt to be able to do it. Have you seen the meme from? Have you okay? Have you seen Casino Royale? Yes. Oh, the, the new one. Yes. You know the bit where the guy with the funky eye is like playing. Um, he's playing with Bond at the casino. Mm-hmm. There's a meme which is him at that table with a smile on his face. Mm-hmm. Dressed as the as the Joker from Balatro, <laughs> and it says, "Sorry, Mister Bond, you don't have the malt to make it past anti six. And I was like, "I hate this meme that's because really it's good. so true. For me, and it's so true." That's the interesting thing about Balatro is, I'll have runs like that where um, I will have the Jokers are great. My deck looks great. And I just don't get any planet cards, or I don't get any Ar- Arcana cards, like tarot cards. I don't get any of those, and like I can make it far enough, but I f- I feel like the best runs I have is everything kind of raises up together oh. to kind of complement each other. Because like I'll have a bunch of runs where I don't have the malt necessary, like. My chips are going okay. I've got a great synergy like you had where it's like, yeah, three or four or more of these jokers all synergize with each other. But every time I play a two pair, I it's level one. So like I just have yep. no – there's no fuel for the engine to get started because it's like, yeah, 20 chips pl- time, times two, yay. And then it's like times 10, times 1.5, times – and it's like at the end of it, you're like, I have 300 chips. Woohoo! You know, it's just like, cool. I need forty thousand ships right now, so that's that's not really gonna work. Um, yeah. And to me, those are the most. I don't want to say frustrating because I just I just go again. But it's one of those things. Just like, man, if I yeah. just if I had better luck, if I got planet cards, if I got m- maybe even more enhanced cards in my deck, maybe that would have done. Maybe I, this would have been the, the the run to win this deck, and it just wasn't. Uh huh. That that's also I been did. me this week of like I'm opening up standard decks a lot more because the majority of cards that are in standard deck booster packs have a seal or a an effect on them or something, um, and I've found especially in the kind of like middle game um, where you're at like past anti four because i feel like the make or break point is like the anti four boss um once you get past that it's like all right now i can kind of start investing now i've got a little bit of money i start investing in stuff and i start doing stuff and i think i think that uh that's going to make it a little bit easier it's also sort of funny because we're recording this on the uh not I don't know when it's coming out, but there's a big patch for the game coming out. I think it's 1.0.1 that kind of rebalances the entire game to make it, I don't think significantly easier, but I think the the beginning of the game where you're playing your first couple decks, you're getting your feet under you, that seems to be quite a bit easier. Um, it's the Dead Cells patch. Yeah, but it's a lot of, I think, smart choices because... Um, this is beta info that that's out on like the Steam branch. But for an example, right now while we're playing the game, if you do a um a skip for a blind and it says the next shop will have a rare Joker in it, you gotta still pay for that Joker. So if you don't have the money, it doesn't really mean anything. Uh-huh. In this upcoming patch, if you pick that skip and you go to the shop, that rare Joker is free, which is a really that's- smart change a big difference Uh uh-huh and like all of those like uncommon jokers all of those joker skips those are free the first shop is guaranteed to have a buffoon pack in it so you're guaranteed to at least get one joker out of the beginning so it's like the the engine that fuels your run should be easier to get started at the very beginning of the game which i think is a really smart change um because i think that's the majority of the time when my runs fail is those first two antis where it's like, all right, maybe a lot of decks I'm or a lot of runs I'm doing now, I'm skipping small blind because I don't get rewarded for it anyway because of the, um, uh-huh. the stake I'm on. Um, so like putting up 450 or 600 chips at the beginning, 
not that hard. Um, but like if I get to the end of that and there's nothing in the shop, that run isn't going anywhere. And that is, that can be pretty frustrating, um, which I think I'm a little bit more like new run uh, trigger happy here of just like, yeah, this isn't, this isn't making it. We're just, let's pull the ripcord, get out of here. Yeah, I know. Um, I, I, let's just say I've hit a lot of the new run button this week. Yep. A lot of the new run. Yep. I I think that's smart too because I think I think you're you're seeing now the synergies where you're like, oh, okay, now I'm I've got this deck so I can like start, you know, like your your face card deck. If you didn't have that Joker that turned all cards into face cards you're like well now i can just start deleting twos and threes and fours out of my deck like let's just let's start cloning uh -huh. kings and queens let's start buying face cards from booster packs like we you can start doing that but um you had a an incredible synergy there that just unfortunately didn't take off yep so. i just didn't have the malt and that yep. guy from that movie is forever going to be looking at me with that stupid clown face meme yep it's a good it, one it's it's burned in my brain <laughs> Uh, I, I'm literally just about to Google Balatron meme to see mm -hmm. if I can find it and send it to you at some point. Yep. Um, put it in, the, the, put first it in the Discord. Uh, the, the first autofill uh, was uh, Balatron is hot. <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong. Welcome to our world, punks. Yeah, yeah, you're not wrong. Um, I had a pretty wild week this week. Um, I unlocked a couple more decks um largely by getting higher and higher in the stakes on so i have two decks i really like to play the one i like to play the most is the abandoned deck that's the one without face cards um and i'm on blue stake whatever the one is above black stake um black stake is is wild because it adds another new type of joker in the game uh, which is eternal jokers um, they can't be sold or destroyed. Um, and okay. that can be great, but it's also not great if they just give you a really, like, you open, like, a tarot pack, and it's like, yeah, man, make me a Joker. Sure, why not? And it's like, yeah, here's, a, like, a Riff Raff, that one that makes two Jokers during a, when you pick a blind. Now it's eternal. Yes. Good luck. It's like, oh, boy. Okay, that's not. So is it a is it eternal like when you buy it, or is it like just something that you bump into? It's it's random. So like, um, you'll see like let's say you go to the shop and there's three jokers available in there. One or one or two of them might be eternal, but they don't. They're not guaranteed to be. Um, so it it's it's interesting because there's some cool synergies you can have where it's like, I want to make sure this this card stays forever. Uh, or like I have a bunch of really great cards that are jokers I don't want to lose and I have um, that spectral card that destroys a joker destroys a bunch of jokers and clones one but yes. eternal, eternal cards can't get destroyed so you're kind of decreasing your uh, your risk there um, true so those... uh, here's a fun thing that I learned by the way today mm -hmm. <clears> hmm <throat> If you only have one Joker, you can't use that type of card. Yeah, there there are a couple that don't that don't let you do that. They're all, I believe. Because I, I had one which was destroy a Joker and make it a random Joker negative, and I was like, I'm gonna sell my second Joker and just have this one that's negative. Right. Yeah, and that that's the that only either. one that won't let you use it. The one where you clone a card and destroy the others if you sell all but the one you want to clone that one still works yeah i use that one a lot um interesting I had, a, I had a really wild run on the abandoned deck this week with the bus stop joker that is unbelievably strong for that deck because it um it, every time you play a, a hand it increases by plus one mult but it resets to zero every time you play a face card the bandit deck doesn't have face cards. So doesn't have face cards. So only just grows. I uh -huh. cloned that card. So I had two of those cards that were both increasing by plus one mult every time I played a hand. And so like 
they started at like when I cloned it, it was like plus three or something. By the end of that run, each one of them was increasing the molt by 40 something and like only uh -huh. getting higher and higher. So like there's some really wacky stuff you can do uh, in this game in, in kind of a, in a pretty entertaining way. Um, I think as long as you can find the the right synergies, this is yep. one of those roguelikes where you could break it yep. real bad. And and that's why I'm I feel hopeful about the the upcoming patch because I think finding the cracks in the game to sort of break the run open seem like they'll be uh -huh. a lot easier. Um, and like they're decreasing the amount so green stake is the one that's really pretty hard and that's the majority of the reason why I lose runs nowadays is every every time you beat a boss blind and you go to the next ante the chips that you need to progress get exponentially higher so uh -huh. a lot of my runs will get to like ante 2, ante 3, ante 4 and I'm doing okay but then I roll over to the next ante and it's just like an impossible number where it's like cool I just cleared 20,000 points small blind is 35,000 and it's just like oh god okay um so that one has been really rough and part of what I'm is an interesting design choice for this game and part of the reason why I find some of the later stakes really interesting on decks is because each stake inherits the uh the previous stakes so yeah when you're doing blue stake you don't earn rewards for small blind and the antis increase exponentially and you have eternal jokers and blue stake is you have one less uh discard which is killing me um but like it's interesting that it's getting harder and harder and harder each time you go and it's not just because the next stake is hard, it's because it's inheriting all of those other ones at the same time. Um, so yeah. that has been that has been pretty wild. Um, two final notes for me here. I have a new high record uh, for one hand. That's 353 million points or chips. Uh, I had an unbelievably wild run. Um, and it was um, a lot of like... I have an incredible Joker, and I'm using Blueprint to um, copy the ability of that Joker. And then I have, I don't, I don't even remember what the Joker's called, but it's the one that um, uh, looks like a bunch of drawings on it that copies the ability of the leftmost Joker. Um, and that oh. one was a legendary Joker that increases your malt by times five. So I'm kind of like copying this ability to maximize this thing and then doing times five and then doing times five to that. And that was an, a, a really crazy run. Um, and I also tried my first challenge this week. Um, I tried the on knife's edge challenge because I thought that sounded the most interesting, which is you have, uh, you start with one joker. It's ceremonial dagger, which is, the card that eats the joker that's to the right of it and puts double its cell value on its mult. So if it has a card next to it that has a cell value of four, it adds eight mult to itself. Um, okay. It's on the left permanently and it's eternal. So it's stuck there and it's just going to eat its way through every other joker you have unless you keep feeding it jokers. Um, Good luck. I managed to get Riff Raff on that run, which is the one that spawns two common jokers every time you pick a blind. So you were literally just constantly feeding that <laughs> just thing. Just like feeding. The only bummer about it is I got in the same position that you got. I got to anti six or seven or something, like way up there. And I hadn't gotten enough planet cards and I hadn't gotten enough jokers that were of a higher cell value to feed into this thing. So like... I, I just couldn't keep up with the amount of chips it needed me to to continue to get. So uh -huh. that I got real close on that one on my first run. I'm like, all right, now I kind of I kind of see how you 
you need to break this one open. Um, but we'll we'll sort of see, sort of see if I can if I can do that one. Um, but I I feel like I can, I'm equipped now maybe to start doing challenges. But there's still I don't even have all the decks unlocked yet, so I feel like that doesn't need to be my focus right now. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I've been I've been playing nothing but Balatro. Man, I just it's a real problem that it's on the console that I play everything on. <laughs> it's just like that's the real the real issue here. Uh and with it being kid friendly and a game that I can literally just put the controller down and the game doesn't care, that means I'm, yeah. I'm playing this a lot. Maybe sometimes oh, I'm done doing laundry for the moment. I'm going to play one ante. All right, now we got to go off and do another do another thing around the house, but like all that all that kind of adds up. So uh, yeah, I'm in trouble, man. All right, any uh final thoughts here for for Balshow week 3? Uh no, I hope it clicks. Yeah. I do. Yeah. Fingers crossed. Uh all right, thank you very much mm -hmm. everyone for listening. We'll see you next run. Bye. Oi.